somebody though was not the goat. Played on uh on 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 your team, Eric, for a couple of years now, and I, I have to I have to associate him with your team because you know that's where he's had his glory years in the NBA. I know this is a tough one for you. I know uh, Eric this is a tough one for you. I know it was tough for you last night watching this fight. Um, Three time NBA dunk champion, former New York Knickerbocker, the five foot nine wonder Nate the Great Robinson. Stepped into the to the world of boxing last night and stepped out getting his ass whooped. What do you say, Eric? Uh, I know you got your listen, Nick stuff in the I, back there. I think you got your first Nick. of all. <laughs> I always keep my Nick stuff, and I was I'm gonna tell you right now. Even before the fight started, I was pissed that he had on our colors. I because I knew where it was going. I knew he gonna get his ass whipped. And everybody's gonna be like, and he was in there with the Nick colors. Ooh. I thought Listen, it was once we, a Nick, always a Nick. Didn't it, ain't that the slogan? Right, once a Nick, always a Nick. But even Snoop said, you ain't even got no boxing shoes on. He was out there with Jordan ones, wondering why he, he couldn't get his he couldn't get his footwork right in the ring. And listen, I'm, I'm gonna say this too, bro. 44 plus years plus Nate Robinson getting his ass whooped. <laughs> yeah, it, it just it just keeps getting worse and worse. It just keeps getting worse and worse, man. You know. We, we just can't catch a break. Even when it don't even involve us, it involves us, right? Because now he laid out on the, on, on, the, on the canvas wearing Nick colors. But yeah. Nate Robinson, Nate, you maximize your potential in the league. I give you all the props in the world for being able to accomplish what you accomplished in the league as, as a 5'9 guard, right? I'm only 5'10". So for you to do what you did, I, I, I'm amazed by that. But bro, you let them play you. You let them play you, bro. You had no business getting in the ring, right? And I'm not saying this kid, Logan Paul, is a good fighter, but he has been training for two and a half, almost three years because this he thinks this is the career path he wants to take. You probably just started training a month, month and a half ago. They probably started training once they locked in the fight. You, you ain't right. training and, for boxing. And for the people who's like, oh, no, he's been training three months. He ain't been training no three months. He ain't been training no three months. All right. The kid Logan Paul is naturally bigger than you. This dude is 6'1", 190 pounds. And that's what he weighed at. On, on fight night, he probably was up to about 200, 205. Yeah. He's way bigger than you. And he's actually been training for a few years. And you went in there thinking like you was fighting Pookie from the block and was just getting <laughs> smacked upside your head. The most disgusting part of the fight was the kid Logan Paul only landed eight punches. Three of them put you on your ass. That's a good percentage, though. <laughs> I mean, he only landed eight. <laughs> That's definitely a good percentage, though, bro. What can I say? That's a good percentage. Right. He only landed eight. Three of them put you on the ass. The last three punches he threw all landed. Yeah. So, like, you was just open game out there. I don't know. And even Snoop said, I don't know what defense he doing because he just running at him and just getting punched in the face. He was playing wrestling, bro. I thought he was Goldberg. He kept trying to spare him on every, he kept running. I'm, I'm like, yo, what are you doing? Who was working with this man? I'll tell you one thing. First of all, I'm not crazy enough to jump in nobody's boxing ring or nothing like that. If I got to throw hands in the street, that's one thing. We're going to have to get it shaking. I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses. One of them is trying to get into a professional sport that I know I didn't got no damn business getting into i don't give a if it's for charity i don't care what it's for i'm not gonna step into a boxing ring and i'm not prepared for that especially knowing this kid has fought before this one of the things like boxing is one of those sports where experience is ultra valuable like it's uber valuable so the fact that he's been in the ring, this is something that he wants to do. You ain't trying to box, Nate. You ain't trying to be no boxer. This kid wants to fight. So he is training like he wants to be a fighter. And, you know, we, we know somebody that, that thought they was going to be, you know what I'm saying, a, 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 a champion in, in the sport of boxing and, and, and thought they was going to go in on their schedule, train on their schedule, eat how they wanted to eat, drink how they wanted to drink, and thought they were going to compete with guys 
that live, breathe, and pardon my French shit boxing. Every day. This ain't, it's a, it's a boxing is a lifestyle. One thing, you know, when I spoke to Deontay Wilder, he said, we don't stop training. Training don't ever stop. We go year round with this. If you are trying to be in the sport of boxing, you are going year round with this. This is not, oh, I see a white boy in a celebrity match on camera and let me call him out and I, and I could just jump in the ring and we going to fight and I'm going to whoop his ass. No, it does not work that way. You have to train like your life depends on it because your life does depend on it. That Them hits look bad that Nate Robinson was taking. You know, and I think the worst part is you can't even go back to the hood no more. Because what you going to say when you go back to the hood, first thing going to say, I mean, you try to get all swallowed up in the chest. You ain't do that to that white boy when he whipped your ass. Listen, like he's I not going to ever live this down. That's a fact. And that's why I don't have any <laughs> sympathy for Nate Robinson. There are no. people who are like, oh, Nah, I ain't got no sympathy for him because the, the the phrase is overused, but it's true. You do not play boxing. You yeah. don't play that. Like you said, the best fighters of the world, the Deontay Wilders, the Tyson Furies, the Errol Spencers, the Danny Garcias who are coming up next week, they train year round. Yeah, they may take three or four days off to let their body recover, but on that fourth day, guess where they back at? In the gym, right? Yeah. The average boxer, the average boxer who's probably never been a headliner, never fought on pay-per-view, he's training six to eight months year round. Yeah. So you don't don't tell me, oh, I'm just gonna get in the gym for about two months. Nah, it's not how it works, bro. Because you asked. That's not how it works. That's you, not how it Because you works. jumped over the White Howard. <laughs> nah, listen, just because you might have landed a lucky punch in a street fight in your hood against a motherfucker who didn't know how to fight, does not mean you know how to box, bro. Uh, it, it's and I'm disappointed. Like I said, the, the the people that's giving Nate sympathy ain't no sympathy for Nate, bro. It ain't none because he called out this kid. Yeah, I can understand if he out. called you out. Right, you called the kid out. So when you called him out, I would have assumed that you had already been taking some sort of training. Yeah, because you got to get in that ring. Right, so ain't no sympathy. And let's not forget I, from the reports from the things I read. He got paid 600000 for this. So you did it for the check. So enjoy the check. Yeah. You're going to have to, like you said, for the rest of your life, next time you get loud with somebody, they're going to remind you. Don't yeah. make me do you like the white boy did. Exactly. And, you know, shout out to shout out to Matt Bonds. Because <laughs> Matt Bonds, he broke things like, listen, you're going to have to eat this. You're going you're gonna to get the memes. It's going to be a couple of weeks. And let you, like, you're going to be the joke of the internet for, mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks. Or, or or unless something major happens, and this is how it, how it happens. It has to be something else major in the news cycle that'll that'll bump you out of the top spot. But that's gonna be for that's gonna be a little while because we ain't got nothing coming up. The Super Bowl is is far away. The next boxing uh, big fight is not until uh, I think the 19th. Canelo is fighting. No, no, no. We got we got boxing this week. This Sunday. I mean, this Saturday. Danny Garcia against Errol Spence. Okay. Yeah, but. but in and that, it's not going to be the same because I don't think it's not going to be like that. You, right. You're, you're probably, and, and to your point is you're probably not going to get a an embarrassing sports moment Yes, for, for quite some time, right? It you, We're probably not going to see that one moment in sports for, for a few weeks. So you got to eat that. And as a boxing fan, I, I hated last night for so many reasons, bro. I hate it. Like I, I, I wanted to see Mike and we've, we talked about it personally, like the nostalgic feelings of I want to see Mike but the boxing purist in me knew what yesterday meant. Yesterday meant a mockery of the sport, bro. You know what I'm saying? Nate Robinson against Logan Paul, Mike against uh, Roy Jones at their age. It didn't do anything good for the sport. Swish Parker here, pulling me up to Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned in to Real Fans Real Talk. Real 